Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I want to take a really advanced look at the hue saturation adjustment layer and what you can do with something that you're probably not even touching, and it's this area right here that allows you to expand the range of any colors that you select in your image. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. So recently in the palette effects education, I showed a really advanced way to use the hue saturation adjustment layer, specifically when it came to black and white adjustments and how you could select a range for the blue sky in your image if the blue that you were selecting wasn't quite enough. However, I want to take the time to really analyze this and give you an opportunity to see it here. If you want, you can follow along with me by going to F64 Academy and downloading this image from the page. If you're already on F64 Academy, just go ahead and click the download button and you can follow along to kind of experiment with this to see exactly what's happening with our colors. So I'll show you on this diagram and then I'll show you a practical application on how we can apply this. So what this deals with is this area right here on the HSL adjustment layer. And when it's set to master, it might not look like it's doing anything at all. But if we take the targeted adjustment tool that we have right here and we click that on and we select our reds, look what happens now. We get these little slidey things down here that I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not touching that because I don't know what it does, okay? Uh, but what I would do is I would come in here and I maybe modify the saturation or the hue of my color red and I would see that what was happening down here is as I move this over, my reds are now turning that color green. Not only do I see that on the actual image, but I also see it down here that this is the constant and these are the variables that I'm applying, okay? So if we drop this back down to zero and we drop this down to zero, we can use a saturation of negative 100 to show really good uh, usage of this tool down here. So if we move this over to the left, watch what happens. Watch this diagram as I move this over to the left. This is effectively a range selection. So if I move this over, you can see that now our magentas are starting to get a little bit more in the, um, the negative 100 saturation all the way over to about here. Now, this is kind of like blend if we're selecting a range. So the, the big sliders on the ends that look like triangles are essentially um, what you're feathering that color out to. So we're feathering our reds being our red constant right here and feathering it out into our greens. But you'll notice that it doesn't really get quite that far. It does a nice feather out into those colors, but it doesn't grab all of those colors. That's where these bars come in handy. If we move this over, over to the left, watch what happens. We start to grab more of the magentas, more of the blues, and then we're basically saying that red is now all of this area in the magentas moved on over. If we grab this side, we're doing it, we're making the reds now include more of our greens into our cyans. Now notice that it still says reds up here. This area right here, these heavy bars, we'll call them heavy bars because they have the straight lines on them. That is the range of color that you're selecting. And the, the triangular bars are more of the feather that you're selecting out. So here, it's not a very big feather because there's not much room between the heavy bar and the feather, okay? If we bring this back down to our reds, watch what happens here. This is pretty interesting. So this is just basically targeting our reds. You can grab in the middle here and move it over. So now we're basically saying that our reds are now magentas, which effectively, look what happens up here. We no longer have a red here. We have a magentas and a magentas too, because we're basically telling our reds to now be magentas, okay? If we move that back over, we now have our reds back up here. So sometimes you'll do this and you'll say, why do I have two yellows and no greens? Well, it's probably because whatever you were using, you've now changed the, the profile of that color completely over to another color and it won't show up there in the hue saturation adjustment layer. But at any time, if you wanna reset those things, you just click this reset icon right here. So let's go ahead and do this one more time on this diagram and then I'll show you how this works on an image. So we'll go ahead and take the targeted adjustment tool and let's click on our blues. So now it's basically it's selecting our blues, or we could even go in here and just select our blues, but I like to use the targeted adjustment tool because that tells me exactly what color I wanted to pick. And we can just say, you know, let's make our uh, blues a little less saturated and maybe make them a little bit more into the magentas. And we want to feather that out. So we want to move this over into our cyans. Again, if, if we go into our blues, you'll see that it kind of wraps to the other side. 
and then we can continue that on over there and continue this on over here and now we've turned our blues more into a magenta area and you're thinking why would you ever want to do that anyway well sometimes this helps in sunsets or sunrises to grab the colors and make them blend a little bit better like you're going to see in the practical application but basically what this is doing here is you're not just stuck with the selection of the color blue anymore by doing this and only being stuck with that little small sliver of blue you can now use the range here and maybe make a bigger selection of that color blue so let's go ahead and show a practical application here i'll go ahead and open up this image right here so how this works in practical application well if i go ahead and make a hue saturation adjustment layer i click the targeted adjustment tool and i click on let's say this area right here which should be my reds I can make them more saturated, but then I can come in here and move this more towards the magentas. So let's say I wanted that hue to all change effectively the same way. Look at how we have more of our uh, reds now becoming much more vibrant and even changing our magentas to that color and even more so moving all the way up into our blues now. Now, does this look great? By no stretch of the imagination does this look amazing, and I probably would never do this to my photograph, but you see the idea here is that we can use this range slider to grab more area in our image. So I'll go ahead and reset these, and we'll go ahead and click on, maybe we'll grab a target adjustment layer and click on our blues. So if we were to move the saturation up because we want to make those blues a little bit more saturated, and then move this over because we want to grab those magentas in there as well. That gives us a good selection of that blue and the magenta area to boost the saturation and both of them equally together. So instead of it just boosting the saturation of the blue, you're now increasing that range or that spread, the feather here, to feather itself into the magentas. And if you want to increase the spread, you use the heavy bars, the heavy bars and the feather bars. <laughs> I just made that up during this tutorial. So. And that's a way that you can use this in practical application so that you can effectively change the saturation of not just the one color but also the surrounding analogous colors along that uh, color uh, it looks like a color strip at this point uh, so as you change that hue remember what happens though our blues are now turning that magenta all the way into those magentas this is where you can get some pretty interesting effects with your uh, adjustments here so just keep those things into consideration this was just a really advanced look at the hue saturation adjustment Adjustment layer and how you can use the range slider there to uh, grab more color than just the color that you have selected. Sometimes you'll use that targeted adjustment tool. Let me go and reset this because I can't look at this anymore. Sometimes you use that targeted adjustment tool and you'll click on a color and you're like, why isn't it not just, I just needed to select more. It's got me in this little box. Well, this is how you expand that box, feather it out and increase the range of that color to grab more color in each one of the adjustments that you're doing. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this tutorial, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend because this is some really cool stuff that you can do with the HSL adjustment layer. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this tutorial, and I certainly hope that it expanded your creative vision on what you can do in Photoshop.